to the channel in this video today we're going over the Magicka Templar build for the Ascending Tide patch. So max Magicka is 37.7k, maximum health is 18.6k, magic recovery is 1.4. Our spell damage unbuffed is 4k and our spell critical is 64.4% with our spell pin at 5.3. Um, I'm a Briton so keep that in mind as uh, Britons are more for sustain um, but if you want to go more toward the damage focus side High Elf, Dark Elf, and Khajiit would be your top three. But if you're just getting on to play and have fun, then you can really be any race. You could be a Red Guard if you wanted to. You could be a Wood Elf. It doesn't matter. So, I have 64 points into Magicka. The food I'm running is the Gas the Eye Bowl, but it does say Ice Cream, which basically gives me uh, 4.1k Max Magicka and 419 Magic Recovery. If you find yourself not really needing that recovery, then you can always go with um, Solitude, Salmon. Uh, it gives you max health at uh, 5.3k and max magic at 4.9. And then also, if you still want a little recovery, this will give you 2.8k max magic with 3k max health and then 311 magic recovery. Now, there's also Purifying Bloody Mara, uh, but it really doesn't give you the same stats. Like max magic gives you 4.6, the Bias Defu gives you 4.9. Max health 5.3, and this gives you 5k. So if you just want to use a gold food, by all means you can go for it, but solitude by set food is better. So, now, the boon I'm running is the thief, and it's just for more critical chance. Uh, you do not have to be a vampire. Uh, vampire is not necessary. Like, I'm not even a vampire. I've just been bitten by one, and I haven't either. I haven't went ahead and turned into a vampire, and, or, and I haven't purified it. So, but you can be a vampire if you want to, or don't. It's up to you. Champion points in the green tree. We have Fortune's Favor, Gilded Fingers as two of our passives. Uh, basically, Gilded Fingers gives us an extra 10% gold from all resources. And Fortune Favor gives us an extra 50% gold from treasure chests and stack boxes. Now, we also have Steadfast Enchantment here, which basically gives us a 50% chance to not consume a charge on our weapons. And the charges on your weapons are basically like the Poison Enchant, the Weapon Enchant, you know, Fire Enchant. Those are the charges that you have a chance of not consuming. Now, I will say if you don't have a lot of CP points, don't worry about it. Because honestly, since that stuff has kind of become a thing, I have more Soul Gems than I know what to do. So, and honestly, when I do need to charge, I just tend to use these Crown Soul Gems because they're from the Daily Rewards, and they just, I don't have anything else to do with them. So, yeah. So, if you don't have a lot of champion points, just don't even worry about Steadfast Enchantment. Just put the 10 in it to breach the gap to Treasure Hunter. Uh, treasure Hunter is one I keep on my bar at all times. It basically increases the quality of items I find in treasure chests. Now... I also keep liquid efficiency. Whenever you use a potion or poison, you have a 10% chance to not consume it. So when I do use spell power pots or poisons, at least this way, I can save some gold. That's pretty much what it's all about, saving gold. Now, I also keep Master Gather and Plentiful Harvest on my bar because when I'm waiting for dungeon teams to form, or not dungeon teams, but trial teams and dungeon queues, then I, I farm. And basically, Master Gather gives me a 50% reduced time and harvesting those nodes. And Plentiful Harvest gives me a 50% chance to get double resources from those nodes. So, in the red tree, there's so many passives. But Defiance, Tumbling, Mystic Tenacity here, Sprinter, Hasty inside Wind Chaser, Tireless Guardian, Fortification, Savage Defense, Bastion Brutality, and Nimble Protector inside Walking Fortress. Now, Hero's Vigor is one of these passives in the Red Tree I really believe you need because it gives you 560 max health. And if you have the extra CP points and can spare them, Tempered Soul is a really good one to have. Uh, basically gives you 10% more resources when you get rezzed. Uh, and it, it will happen. If you get caught sleeping or not paying attention, you might get dropped. Or maybe you just don't know a mechanic and it catches you. Uh, at least this way, you'll have more resources. So you're not hoping for a potion that you have a potion that you can pop. Or you have orbs or shards coming your way. At least this way, you'll have enough resources. Start your rotation right back up. Now, 
Siphoning spells gives us an extra 1500 magicka when you kill an enemy, when you land the killing blow. Rejuvenation, Fortified, and Balanced Vitality. Now the blue tree, we have Eldritch Insight, Precision, Piercing, Flawless Ritual, and War Mage. Now, if you have extra CP points, Blessed is a really good one to have on a Magic Templar because our spam bolt is healing us. So a little extra 2% can come in handy. Or, uh, also if you have the extra uh, Tower of Discipline, a little extra stamina can help you keep up with the stamina and the tanks that are running ahead of you. Or at least the stamina characters. So, once I keep on my bar, Fighting Finesse gives me an extra 10% critical damage and critical healing. I also keep Biting Aura gives uh, an extra 10% damage to area effect attacks. Thermometer gives me an extra 10% with damage over time effects. And Master at Arms, which increases my direct damage attacks by 10%. So, if my enemy, if the boss or whatever is staying still, like I have a tank, so the adds, uh, the boss is not just running around and just dancing, and I can stay behind him, uh, I usually put on Backstabber. I'll get rid of Master at Arms here and put on Backstabber. Uh, but if you would like to go with a different one, I would recommend swapping out Master at Arms. I would keep the Momage and Biting Aura, and I would ditch the Mom uh Well, I would ditch Master at Arms. You could go Untamed Aggression, Arcane Supremacy, uh, Wrathful Strikes. I would go Wrathful Strikes over the other the other two. Uh, but if you feel like maybe you need a little more healing done on contact when you deal damage, you can always go Riveting Blows. So when you jab, you'll get the heals from the jab, you'll get the extra 2% from this, and this will also heal you as well. Uh, now, sets. The first set that I'm using is Ward Maiden. Ward Maiden is an amazing set on a Magic and Templar, because every one of our abilities, except for the Wall of Elements, is Magic Damage. So, and the Destro Ultimate. But, I'm using Dual Daggers. We're up close, we're, we're right there on the enemy, so you might as well go with daggers. It can feel weird, I will say that. It is kind of weird, you're getting used to it at first. So if you don't like it, or if it just feels a little off for you, you can always go with just a War Maiden Flame Staff. These are, this is a Dark Staff for the War Maiden. It is a uh, quest reward that you can get in Vardenfell for simply going up here and doing this little town quest. Uh, once you finish this, it takes roughly a, just a few minutes if you don't read the story and just run from place to place. Uh, it could take you about five minutes just to do, and then there will be a little quest right here where they basically just send you out to little Daedric spots around and about. Uh, there's like four spots, uh, roughly, if you have the Waitrons, or if you have somebody that can port you around, it could be done extremely quick. If not, it might take you about 15-20 minutes just to kind of run the map with where you need to go. But you get that little staff, it will come infused, uh, this one, it will come just like this, but you just, you can transmute it to precise if you want to, if you like the name, if not, you just equip it and then reconstruct it to have a more main Inferno staff. So, now, me, I'm running daggers, I'm running a Nern dagger with flame damage enchant and precise with poison damage enchant. Um, now, what this set does, it gives us critical chance, max magicka, weapon damage, and then it adds 586 weapon and spell damage to your magic damage abilities. Uh, this is, I think, actually around 600 if everything was golded out, but my jewelry is purple, so it still brings it down to 586. So, like, if you had body pieces that were purple, uh, and you, if you had body pieces and you upgraded that to gold, plus the gold weapons, it would give you 600. So, jewelry is just arcane with spell damage enchant uh, of course your dps will be better uh, if you go with one infused two bloodthirsty three bloodthirsty two infused one bloodthirsty either way no matter which way you mix and match it will be better than all three arcane but all three cane all three arcane will definitely get you through the content and you don't really have to transmute if you don't have the transmutation crystals uh, it's not that it's not a big deal bag bar we're using the maelstrom inferno staff infused with a weapon damage enchant on it. Now, what this does is your light and heavy attacks will deal an additional 1.3k damage to enemies in your wall of elements. Now, this is the non-perfected, and it comes from Maelstrom Arena inside Rothgar. Maelstrom Arena can take you anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes to run. It is a very easy 
little arena to do on your own. It is a solo arena, so you can't take a friend in there. But it's extremely easy. It may take more than one run, but with the new item, uh, new item thing, uh, item sets collection, I guess. I don't know. Kind of space in here. Uh, what to oh, what to call it? Eventually, you will get this drop. So it will only take you so many runs before you get this, and it is worth having. So now, monster set running near it. We're running medium shoulders divines with max magicka and medium helmet divines with max magicka. I know I said those backwards. I'm, I apologize for anybody that bothered. <laughs> uh, but this gives us weapon damage and spell damage. And when you deal direct damage, you have 15% chance to summon a leech crystal that explodes after 2 seconds, dealing 7.9k magic damage to all enemies within 4 meters. This effect can occur once every 3 seconds and scales off the higher of your weapon or spell damage. Now, this comes from Crypto Hearts 2. It is a pretty easy dungeon to get through and do. Uh, so, oh no, no I'm, it went to Dark Shift, my bad. But the Crypto Hearts 2, pretty easy to get through. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, so, it's a pretty easy set. You also have Elambrus here, which is from Crypto Hearts 1, which is pretty easy. But if the target is roaming around, then this will pretty much be a wasted set, honestly. Uh, if you can get through it, Valken Scoria is a really good set. Uh, and then you have Groftar, which is another good set. Now, if you're good with light attack weaving, you have your light attack weaving down, you have no problems, I would go Maul the Infernal. I, honestly, I, I believe Maul the Infernal uh, is one of the better Magicka monster sets right now uh, that is not in a DLC dungeon. Uh, when you deal damage with a lighter heavy attack, you have a 33% chance to summon a fire breathing day drop 15 seconds. Daedroch's attacks deal 2.7k flame damage every 2 seconds. Daedroch can only be summoned once every 15 seconds. So, honestly, I think this is one of the better non-DLC monster sets. And honestly, I, I still believe it's in probably within the top 3. Uh, but, if you can get into DLC dungeons and you're comfortable light attack weaving, Nomineer's Nightmare is probably one of the better ones. Uh, basically, gives you weapon and spell damage and damaging an enemy with a light... Light attack puts a bone stack on them for 5 seconds, up to once every 0.5 seconds. And if 5 stacks, an undodgeable skeleton hand attacks your enemy after 1 second, knocking them into the air and stunning them for 3 seconds, or dealing 11.8k magic damage to, if they cannot be stunned. If uh, enemies then become immune to nightmare stacks for 4 seconds. So, that's just me. If you have DLC and you're comfortable light attack weaving, I would go with Naughty's Nightmare or Bob the Infernal. If you're still kind of shaky on your light attack weaving, Groftar, Nerenth, um, yeah, Groftar, Nerenth, Elabras, Valken Scoria would be the sets that I would go with. Now, if you want a more survivable set, Iceheart. Uh, basically, it gives you critical chance, and when you do critical damage, you have a 20% chance to gain a damage shield, but it will also pulsate 1.3k frost damage to all enemies within 5 meters of you every 1 second. So it's going to give you some survivability and also deal a little bit damage back. So, just go whichever set though that is comfortable to you. Uh, it is entirely up to you. If you want to go a more set that will keep you alive, like a more healing set, Bogdan. Max Magic gives you Max Magic when you heal, heal yourself or an ally, you have a 20% chance to summon a total for 6 seconds. They heals you and your allies within 5 meters for 2.2k health every 1 second. You can throw those on, and with your jabs, you're going to be healing yourself. So, you will proc this quite a bit, even as a DPS. Now, as a DPS, I wouldn't recommend running this, but if you're out on your own, you're kind of having trouble sustaining, and you don't quite like Ice Heart or don't have it, maybe you're just having trouble getting through at final boss on Vet for whatever reason, uh, Knife Flame, Choke Thorn. Uh, although, Choke Thorn is kind of uh, kind of hit or miss on who that's going to heal. So I'd go with Bogdan. Or, you can go Engine Guardian. But, sometimes it will heal you, sometimes it will restore Magicka, and sometimes it will restore Stamina. Uh, so, it's going to be, you're going to have a 33% chance on what resources you get. So, but Bogdan will heal you if you're wanting that. Uh, or, you can mix and match two pieces. You know, you can go one piece slime crawl, one piece ice heart for more crit. You could go one piece Kino, one piece Yawniers for more weapon damage. You could go Scoria, which will give you penetration. Valken Scoria gives you off, uh, offensive penetration with slime crawl, with 
Kina or whatever, or Ma for more Max Magica. You can really mix and match these sets to whatever your liking is. If you don't want to run a full set, just it's up to you. Do whatever makes you feel comfortable on your character. And then finally, the second five piece set is another very easy set to get, and that is Mother's Sorrow. Mother's Sorrow is an amazing set from Deshaun. The prices on this fluctuate so much. I've seen Divines extremely cheap on PS4 NA, but I've also seen it really expensive. So it's just it's you can shop around and find some or you might not get lucky and if you can't you can find pieces and off traits for a thousand gold if that and you can reconstruct them to the divine traits that you want um, or you can just farm this comes from Deshaun it's an overland set we're going to get all divines on the body with max magica and what this set does it just gives us max magica and then a ton of crit that's it that's all it's used for it just bumps up our critical chance now, like I said, War Maiden is another Overland set. It comes from Varnfell. You have a quest where you can get the Inferno Staff from. So you can, if you have two characters that are 160, you can literally do this on two characters. Get one infused if you don't have the Maelstrom Staff on the back bar. Or if you if you don't light Attack Weave or you're still having trouble with that, this right here isn't going to do you any good anyways. You know, this is all about increasing the damage of your light and heavy attacks to people inside of your Wall of Elements. So if you're not light Attack Weaving, this isn't going to do you any good. So, you can honestly just do that quest twice and get in a few staff that you can put with a put in a weapon enchant on, put it on your back bar, do it on a second character, get you another one if you'd like the name, make it precise. Or, the fact that you even get this first staff that's infused, you can just reconstruct the other one. You don't have to have two of them. I know some people like the name. I like the name. That's why I have two. That's why I did it like this uh, originally. So, but... Some people don't care. If you just want to go with easy, you just do the one. That's an infused one. And then reconstruct the other one with transmutation crystals for the precise. It's simple and easy. Uh, those are, These are probably really easy sets. Even the jewelry, I've seen jewelry anywhere between 2.5k all the way up to 50k. Like, it's... Word Maiden, it, it just depends on who puts it up for sale. will depend on what they value at. There's a lot of people who just don't think this set is worth anything. We'll throw jewelry up for 5K. We'll throw them up for 2, 2.5 or whatever. 10K, 15. You know, some people will throw it up for 30, 40K. But if you look around and you search around, you will find this stuff extremely cheap. You will find all this setup extremely cheap. Uh, and if you can't, you know, I wouldn't pay more than 10K for a, a body piece in Divines. You can mix and match. I would, you, because honestly, you can't go wrong with either one of these. Both these sets are pretty static sets, so one's going to have to go anyways. I just chose it to be my Mother Sorrow, uh, War Maiden because I would rather keep my crypt up. So, I just use War Maiden on the front bar. But you can honestly get Mother Sorrow jewelry, run like three pieces of War Maiden on the body with the, the weapons and stuff on the front. Uh, or you can just run three pieces of Mother Sorrow on the body with the weapon on the front and the back if you don't have Maelstrom Marina staff. So, but you can mix and match. Skills, our main spammable is Puncturing Sweep. We'll launch a Relentless Assault on striking enemies in front of you four times. With your spear that deals 4.1k magic damage to the closest enemy and 1.5k magic damage to all the other enemies. Uh, when you heal, you heal for 40% of the damage done with this ability. So, Degeneration, bind an enemy with Chaotic Magic dealing 15.1k magic damage over 11 seconds as sex magic spills out from them, granting you major brutality and source increase your weapon and spell damage by 20% for 22 seconds. Uh, so this is how we get major sorcery in this build. We use degeneration. Radiant oppression. Burn an enemy with a rail of holy fire, dealing 1.1k magic damage over 1.8 seconds. Deals up to 500% more damage to enemies below 50% health. Now understand this says this is kind of our this is our execute. And I understand it says below 50% health, but I really wouldn't start using this till they're around 20%. Um, it, it's just it's not going to perform. Sweets will still outperform. Radiant Oppression. Uh, plus it locks you into that animation. And it just it just kind of sucks. I would not start using this until around the boss is around 20% health. Camouflage Hunter. This is just here for the extra weapon damage. from And to give us Minor Berserk. That's it. Well, you also gain Minor Berserk for 5 seconds after dealing critical damage from an enemy's flank. And it's there for the extra weapon damage from the... Or the extra weapon and spell damage from the weapon, weapon guild... The Fire's Guild 
passive. Wow, I got so mixed up right there. Uh, but yeah, the mon even the Minor Berserk isn't a big deal if you have a healer giving you combat prayer. Minor Berserk will be given to you through combat prayer or if you have somebody running Kenrus. Uh, it, but it really depends with Kenrus. Some people can't keep Kenrus stacks up and if that's the case, then you're still not going to be getting Minor Berserk from them enough. So, but Camouflage Hunter is here because I try to keep this rotation as simple as possible. Uh, if you want to replace this with something on the bar, if you're more comfortable with your rotation, Purifying Light. Summon an expanding beam of pure sunlight to doom an enemy, dealing 5k magic damage to them and copying all their damage taken from you for 6 seconds and releasing 50% of it as additional magic damage to them. Maximum copy damage is 14.1k. This value is based on your spell damage. So when this effect ends, allies, you and allies near the enemy are healed for 2.4k health every 2 seconds for 6 seconds. Now keep in mind this does have a this duration of 6 seconds. This is 10. Or 12. No, 11. Damn. I don't know. So it kind of lines up with the rest of our abilities to be able to go. Uh, I'll go over closer rotation in a bit. But degeneration allows us not to use spell power pots. So I just kind of go with it. Uh... Inner Light, while slotted, you gain Major Savagery and Prophecy, which is the same thing Camouflage Hunter does, uh, but it increases our Max Magicka by 5% and gives us a little more resources from the Mage Skill Passive line. Crescent Sweep, swing your spear around with Holy Vengeance, dealing 11.3k magic damage to all nearby enemies, an additional 5.5k magic damage every 2 seconds for 6 seconds. Enemies in your path will be hit for 60% more damage. So, after the initial burst from the uh, Destro on our back bar. This is the ultimate I tend to use after that. You can even switch this out with Dawnbreaker. You know, you can go Flawless Dawnbreaker for some more, with more spell damage, uh, and you can use that too. It's, it's entirely up to you on what you want to do. If you have Meteor, you can put Meteor right here. So, back bar, uh, Unstable Wall of Fire, slam your staff down and create an Unstable Flaming Barrier in front of you, dealing 1.2k flame damage to enemies in the target area every one second. Burning enemies take 20% more damage from this ability. When the effect ends, the barrier explodes, dealing 6.9k flame damage. Blazing Spear. Send your spear into the heavens to burn down a shower of divine wrath, dealing 8.3k magic damage to enemies in the area, an additional 835 magic damage every one second for 10 seconds. An ally near the spear can activate the Blessed Shards synergy, restoring 3.9k magic or stamina, whichever maximum is higher. So, originally, um, a Templar was kind of more of a... I was using a Luminous Spear just for more resources. Uh, but I wanted to get more DPS selfish, I guess. I didn't really care for group utility. So I switched over to Blazing Spear. And then I was using a regular Wall of Elements. Uh, the other one. Uh, spacing on the name. Uh, but basically, that lasts for 14 seconds. This lasts for 10. So both of these last for 10 seconds. So this way, the rotation is closer together. Uh, barb Trap. When triggered, the trap deals 4.5k bleed damage and additional 16.2k bleed damage over 18 seconds and grants you minor force, increasing your critical damage by 10% for the duration. Basically, this is just our way to get minor force. It's a nice little dot, too. We're up close, so it works out. And it lasts for 15 seconds, or 18 seconds, but it takes 2 seconds, so for roughly 20 seconds. So we basically use it every 2 rotations. Channel Focus. This is just here. To increase our physical, to give us major resolve, just to kind of help us be a little tanky. But we also restore 242 magicka every one second over the duration. And standing within the ruin, it heals us for 885 health every one second, which goes off your max health. Now, if you have no problem sustaining, your healing is fine. You can ditch this. You have options. If you are comfortable light attack, we even go solar barrage. Uh, this is going to give us empower as long as it's active. While the ability is active, increasing the damage of our light and heavy attacks by 40%, plus it deals pretty good magic damage. If you are not comfortable light attack weaving still, Ritual Retribution. Basically, it's going to cleanse you, and enemies in the area will take 3.4k magic damage every 2 seconds for 12 seconds, which increases by 5% per tick. Allies can activate it, uh, activate the Purifying Synergy, cleansing all harm flex, harmful effects from themselves, healing for 6.2. So... If you don't need the sustain, you don't have any problems with that, you can go Ritual Retribution or Solar Barrage. It just depends on which one you're good at. If you're not good, or if you still don't have Light Attack Weaving now, Solar Barrage will be outperformed by Ritual Retribution. So just go with that. 
But if you're comfortable light attack weaving, Solar Barrage. That empowering is amazing on your light attacks. So, and then we have Inner Light. It's just, it's just here. Same thing for the front bar. Now, I will go back to this and say that if you do not need uh, this either, but you don't really want the extra damaging ability, and you want a more survivable ability, Rest Ceremony. You can either go Honor the Dead, which... Um, Healing anyone who is below 75% health restores 15% of the ability cost every 2 seconds over 6 seconds as a magicka. Or you can go Breath of Life. Heals the second target for one third the amount. So uh, basically you can kind of use Honor the Dead for a little sustain. And this one will heal another player uh, for a ton of damage. Honestly, I would go Breath of Life because honestly I think Honor the Dead uh, heals you. It's, it's a heal you or a wounded ally in front of you. So it's you may not get that heal. It may go to somebody else. But I would go Breath of Life. That's just me. But do what you feel is best. So. And then of course we have Fire Rage. The Destro Ultimate on our back bar. Uh, create a, a storm, a catalytic storm at the target location. That builds for 2 seconds. And lays waste to all enemies in the area. Dealing 10.2k flame damage every 1 second for 7 seconds. Now. If you want. This rotation is pretty simple. It's pretty easy. This is just for sustain. I have it there. Uh, but you pop your pot, barb trap, fiery rage, wall, blazing spear, degeneration, and then just jab until I usually, if I, I see this on the ability, on the thing, which you, as you can see, as it counts down, usually once it's around three seconds, I'll either, I'll finish up the spear that I'm doing, I'll let it stop. And then I go back to rotating. It takes every two rotations before I recast Bar Trap. So, first rotation, you know, you go through, you'll go through the motions, which is basically, I'll use Trash Bots for this. So you would do this, do it as many times as you like. I know some people have, like to do it a certain number of times. Pot, Trap, Drop your Destro, Wall, Spear. Don't forget your light attacks in between if you have it. Bar swap, degeneration, and then just jab. Usually you can get off three or four, you know, as it goes. And then you just bar swap, wall, blaze, degeneration, and just keep it going. Use your ultimate if you have it. Replace one of the spears. And then on the second rotation, you'll just wall, spear, trap. And then you just keep it going like that. If you want a even easier rotation, DPS is very similar. Vampire's Bane. Degeneration, of course you will have to use weapon power pots in this because we don't get major brutality or major sorcery any other way right now. So you replace degeneration with Vampire's Bane. Vampire's Bane will deal 4.6k flame damage and additional 14.8k flame damage over 16 seconds. So, understand that 16 seconds, yes, it will kind of drop off a little bit, but it'll only be for a couple seconds. And basically, what it would look like with Vampire's Bane is that you would basically, you would come in, do the exact same thing. You would trap, wall, spear, Vampire's Bane, and then just jab. As you can see, trap and Vampire's Bane lines up, so you would just keep it going. That's it. So you would only have those three for the most part. And then, as you can see, it's getting time to that. So you would trap Vampire's Bane. Now it's a little off. You know, it's a little second or two. So eventually it will kind of become a little issue. But just keep it going like you normally would. And then, that's it. You know, you can see they're up there. You can see them counting down. Vampire's Bane's about to fall off here. So you can hit it beforehand. And then just go back to the rotation. It's very easy. And then about this point, you know, it's at 28%. So we'll just... But that's still not enough to really execute with it. So normally what I like to do is that I'll wait around 20%. Alt. And then just start executing. That's it. And as you can see, it's going. I still got everything. I got Trap Beast up. Vampire's Bane still on. And it basically just nukes down the enemy. I do it around 20%. But. 
DPS wise, when you do the actual rotation, we did it with degeneration. It's 40.2k. I used trash pots to help sustain. It was a little rough. You get more magicka out of spellfire pots. You get about 2k more, so it's easier to sustain with those. But trash pots, it is doable. I just had to cast uh, the ruin. Uh, I just had to cast this little channel focus here, the little ruin, uh, twice instead of just having it for the initial, the initial issue, or the initial burst with degeneration. With vampire's bane, the DPS is lower at 39.9k. Uh, and I had to use weapon power pots. Or no, no, no. I, yeah. So I didn't. I had, could get away with trash pots here because I got major sorcery from degeneration. And then here I was having to use weapon power pots. Sustaining was a whole lot more easier because I was getting more magicka back. But the DPS was 39.9. So this wasn't a huge deal. Uh, probably with a better. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's not a huge difference in DPS. It's just. A tiny little bit, 300 points, or uh, well, hey, what 322 <laughs> roughly? Yeah, 0.8 on both. <laughs> That's funny, uh, but yeah, so there's not a huge difference. It's just all about whether or not you want to use trash pots or if you want to use weapon power pots or if you have the gold to use weapon power pots. So, me, degeneration, I prefer to use degeneration on just about everything. If I want a simpler rotation, maybe like the trial that I'm in is kind of laggy. Then I will swap out Degeneration for Vampire's Bane just for that extra. So I don't have to use an extra ability and I can just keep it going easier. So buttons, the rotation is really simple. It's really easy. I made it as easy as possible while still putting out 40k. So let me know what y'all think. Let me know what you're running on your Magicka Templar. And until next time, take care.